Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel, and this is the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going to show you at least 10 different skills, or at least uh, talk about them, show you as many as I can, 10 different skills with a string trimmer. So I got this uh, Husqvarna trimmer I'm going to be using today, and I'm uh, just going to go over some things, hopefully give you some good tips along the way, and thinking of all the different ways I've used the string trimmers and skills that I try to develop to be able to make a lawn look its best. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to show you is just my basic trimming. Now, if you're cutting a lawn by yourself, you can do it different ways. Some people want to ride the mower first and then go back and trim. Some people want to do their trimming and come back and ride the mower. Uh, the pros and cons are if you, if you do your trimming first, then you, you just got all your clippings out there and the mower can kind of mulch up the clippings. I usually did the other way. I usually mow first and then you, you know exactly how much trimming you have left to do after that's done you know so anyway I typically walk uh, to where the clippings are thrown up against the house as opposed to out in the yard now this yard's already been mowed but has not uh, I'm not used a string trimmer on it yet so let me just show you briefly how I would use a string trimmer <laughs> enough of that I mean basically if, it, if it's just a, a regular house you can just you can go a lot faster and walk around the perimeter house next thing I'm going to show you is how to edge with a string trimmer now I know some of you like using a stick edger uh, and that's fine there's certainly nothing wrong with that and it gives you a, a clean edge almost every time and it's very easy to learn how to use but some people want to learn how to use a string trimmer to edge so let me give you a quick tutorial on that now I'll show you how to do it so when edging with your trimmer what you're going to do is what I show people is you hold it like this, all you gotta do is just flip it upside down. So if I'm holding it like this, using my finger on the trigger, flip it upside down, now I use my thumb. Now some trimmers perform better upside down than others. You know, it's not probably ideal for your trimmer. Uh, and you know, at all the time you wanna wear your, your glasses and earplug stuff, but probably even more so important. I mean, it's important always, but I'm just saying you're, you're more likely uh, to throw something up at yourself when you're when you're using uh, when you're edging flip it upside down so let's give a shot and we'll edge this sidewalk right here and you can let me say this you can stand on the sidewalk side or you can stand on the grass side either one the key is you're trying to keep your trimmer you know 90 degrees you want it to be straight up and down as possible uh, you know so i don't care how people hold it some of them want to hold it up on their shoulder like this i don't i don't do that i just flip it over but again I'm trying to get it as vertical as When you're using your trimmer as an edger, I like to just use the very tip of the line. You're not trying to dig a trench, you're just trying to get the very tip to, to cut it off like that. So, all right, moving on to skill number three. So we showed you just some basic trimming. We showed you the edging of a sidewalk. I'm gonna show you edging of a flower bed. Now this flower bed has never been edged before and to be honest with you, it doesn't have a very defined line. So this one's not gonna go perfect, but I can give you the the idea and it's, it's the same skill you want to flip it upside down and edge it and then sometimes you got to come back and and sort of level it out after that so let's let me show you how to edge around a flower bed <laughs>
right, so that one, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm more establishing an edge because it's never had one. Once you get that edge established, maintaining it becomes a lot easier. Well, you go and start establishing edge, but if you look over here, you see in some areas the grass is still a little tall where I didn't get the mower close enough. So once I turn the, the trimmer upside down and, and create the edge, now I need to take the trimmer and go back a, a, across it and kind of level it out where the mower cut and where the trimmer edge. So let me show you that real quick. Once you get that you know edge established it, that becomes a, a lot easier job but now you see i've sort of got a, an established edge on that bed and it would look better as the grass gets more established and uh, i i you know here in the south we use sometimes pine straw in our bed sometimes we use mulch pine straw is a little bit easier to do that with in my opinion the mulch tends to throw everywhere if if it you know you accidentally get the trimmer up into the mulch so and, and rocks are the worst i hate trimming a bed with rocks so if you got rocks i would definitely recommend some kind of border around your bed all right the next skill i'm going to show you is just sometimes you get in a situation for whatever reason if you're you, you need to cut a large area with your string trimmer now maybe your mower can't get there for some reason or you know, I don't know, but you know, sometimes you need to, to make a large area and you need to make it look nice as if it was cut with a mower. Now, obviously, if you can get a mower in there, that's going to be better, but you know, still want to do the best we can with this. So, let me show you how to cut a large area. And really, you're just going to make big, wide, sweeping passes with your trimmer while you're doing this, trying to keep it as even as possible. enough of that that you can see the, the whole goal is I'm making big wide passes trying to cover as much ground as possible it's a hillside where it's hard to get a mower on there and still making it look uh, pretty decent like the lawn would all right next thing I want to show you the next skill is how to go after some some very tall thick grass now the reason this is a little bit different sometimes if the grass is really thick if you just put your trimmer let me let me just show you right here if I, if I just sometimes put my trimmer head in here the grass becomes so thick that it can start bogging down the line can get tangled up so if that becomes a situation what i like to do and i'll show you this just a second i like to kind of come at it from the top now i only do this when it's like super thick but basically you're like cutting it down from the top and then you might have to come back and kind of level it out when you get under control so let me see if i can demonstrate
anyway, you see the point. You can kind of that, that was probably thin enough where I wouldn't have had to come from the top. But sometimes, if it starts getting tangled up, and the grass is too thick. Coming from the top is is one way to approach it. And then you can come back and level it out later. Next skill I'm going to show you is how to edge around a tree ring. It's very similar to doing the flower bed. Now this is a sad tree ring, but it's the best we got to show you. At the moment, let me see if I can establish a ring around this tree. Again, if I had a, a big pine straw bed around a tree, that works a lot better. I just had to use the best example I had on hand. So, uh, very similar to the to edge of a flower bed. You want to create your edge, and then you might have to go back and and uh, level it out to make it even with the grass that's been mowed. All right, the next thing I want to show you how to do. Now, I'm, I'm entering the last four. We've covered six different skills with your shrink trimmer. The last four maybe kind of itching over into what I would call the gray area, not necessarily the most professional uses of a string trimmer. But, you know, nonetheless, things I can show you, use them if you want to, if you don't, that's fine. The, the one thing that I've used string trimmer for, again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this on a customer's house, but sometimes you, you get a, a large unruly shrub or something that needs cut back and maybe you don't have a a large uh, articulating set of hedge trimmers that you can angle and cut. I'm thinking in particular of a Iliagnus bush, if you know what that is. They put up these large, tall shoots all the time and, and just a pain to keep uh, trim. So sometimes what you do is instead of having an articulating set of hedge trimmers, which would be great if you had them, if you don't, uh, sometimes you can reach up with your trimmer and basically uh, cut those giant shoots off. Now this is not a hedge trimmer. It's not going to give you a clean cut. It's not really recommended, but I'm going to show you, demonstrate not on the hedges, but just show you uh, cutting back these tree limbs. They do have the power to do uh, shrubs and, and small limbs in a pinch, not necessarily recommended. <laughs> Get in my hair. <laughs> it's certainly not a pole saw, certainly not a hedge trimmer, but in situations like that, that's just some Chinese privet and I love to cut down and make go away. But for the, you know, just demonstrating how you can use it. They are powerful enough, at least this trimmer is, to be able to handle that. If, you, if you're watching, I use these uh, speed feed heads. I'm a big fan of those. I'll put a link in the description. They, this is the smaller one. I like the small one. It holds less line, maybe 15 feet of line. Uh, maybe 12 feet, I can't remember exactly. But to me, the small one, it just puts less strain on the trimmer, spins a little faster. When I have the big one, you really need a powerful trimmer to be able to handle the extra weight, in my opinion. The other thing I want to mention, I'm wearing my Cujo uh, shoes today. They hooked me up with a pair of shoes, and I really appreciate with that. But I'm out here early in the morning. There's a lot of dew on the ground, and just really keeping my feet dry. So, you know, if you're looking for the yard shoe, I'll put a link for the Cujo shoes as well. You can check them out. But, um, you know, I like them. I think they're definitely superior to a pair of tennis shoes. If I had tennis shoes on, I'm pretty sure my socks would be soaked at this point. Next skill I'm going to show you, again, this is a little bit gray area. Not just necessarily recommending this, but you can do it if you want to. Um, sometimes when you, you blow clippings up on the driveway, obviously a blower is the best thing to blow the clippings back in the yard. Sometimes in a pinch, you can let your string trimmer line out and you can sort of use it as a blower. So I'm going to see if I can blow the clippings off of this sidewalk with my string trimmer. I 
wasn't too bad. All right, I'm gonna give you a two for one here because they're very similar skills. Sometimes you get that grass growing up in the crack of your sidewalk. You can use your trimmer to eat away the grass on the sidewalk, I'll show you that. And then the other way I do that is very similar. Sometimes, and this is a rookie mistake, what I feel like with people that are mowing grass, sometimes if the grass is really wet, at least this happened to me before, and you're out there mowing with your zero turn mower and you come out on the driveway to make a turn, you're gonna leave a tire mark on the driveway. Now that, you know, it probably had to have a pressure washer to get it off. It goes away eventually, the rain wash away. Some customers uh, really overreact when that happens. But as a, you know, you try not to do that. When the grass is wet, don't get out on the driveway because it can leave a tire mark. Well, one way you can sort of halfway fix that if you do it, same as getting this grass off the sidewalk. You can take your string trimmer and use the string at an angle and sort of eat away the tire mark that's on the driveway. May not be a perfect fix, not as good as a pressure washer. Best case scenario is don't get your mower on the driveway when the grass is wet or making a, a zero turn, but it is a, a something that's better than nothing. Let me show you how to eat the grass off this sidewalk. <laughs> picture that being a tire mark works the same way all right the last thing I want to say and I can't demonstrate this one thankfully but sometimes in the lawn biz I used to feel like I'd get stung by a wasp or something every year almost you're you're using your trimmer along a fence and here they come out of the wood fence and they light you up before you know what happened just the other day I got hit by a yellow jacket on the hand planting some flowers you know so I, I just really don't like those things so sometimes again wall spray is probably a better situation but i have in times when i open a fence gate or something the walls come everywhere in a pinch i have to use my string trimmer as a self-defense mechanism against the walls okay so here's how it works let me just show you real quick crank it up walls flying everywhere And if you hit one, it works way better than a fly swatter. I promise you, it'll take them down if you hit them. So self-defense against wasps is the last skill I'm gonna to mention to you today. I'm Jason Creel. thanks for watching the video. I know I've left you uh, some things to do, maybe some things to get out in the yard and practice. I wish I had a little better examples on some of them, like the tree ring, but hopefully it's helped you and you continue to, to work on your skills and be able to make your lawn look as good as possible. I need to work on mine in some areas as well. I'm a little bit rusty. If you done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'd encourage you also to ring the bell right beside the subscribe button. That'll notify you when I create new content. Really appreciate you watching. Give me a comment. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye.